Welcome back to another episode of Big Bear Boston Combo, episode 102. The conversation I want to get into today is Sebastian Fandor, the new boogeyman at 154. I'm going to break it all down in this video, so please stay tuned. Please make sure you like, share, comment, and subscribe, and also hit that notification bell. Been trying to withstand it. A big uppercut, but now Lubin with a shot of his. A left hook landed for Lubin. Oh my goodness, a down. Uppercut connected by Fundora. Has him pressed in the corner. And another uppercut. Sebastian, congratulations. How would you describe this victory? Uh, I think probably this is my best performance ever. So uh, it was a back and forth fight. You know, he really, he really brought his hammers today. But you know what? I, de I decided to bring my drill. And that's what I did. That uppercut was landing like no, no other. And uh, it got the job done. The uppercut was so effective tonight, and you went back to it repeatedly. Why do you think it was so effective? Um, it's just my, it's my lucky punch, you know? It's like, right here in Vegas, uh, I feel a little lucky, and then, then that's my lucky punch. So all right hand, it doesn't matter. Once I find that, I feel like the job's done. Were you surprised that he was willing to stay on the ropes? No. Uh, uh, I knew he was gonna come fight. You know, Lubin's an incredible fighter. So you guys know how I break my videos down in two different rounds. So round one, it's Sebastian Fedora, the real boogeyman at 154. Also in round two, now that uh, Sebastian Fedora is now a title contender, does the winner of Jamel Charlo versus Brian Castano, do they have anything to worry about? So let's get right into round one. So it's Sebastian Fedora after coming off a great victory. It was an excellent fight against Erickson Lubin. I love the fight. I love the matchup. I'm glad to see Sebastian. I've been watching this kid for a while. And he proved the reason why he's the title contender now. Um, he took a big risk in fighting somebody as dangerous as er Erickson Lubin. Um, Erickson Lubin, uh, he did fight Jamal Jamel Charlo. Um, it, it was also a good fight, but uh, the last, I think the last three or four fights, Erickson Lubin did really, really well uh, in, in knocking out some of his opponents and putting his putting himself back in title contention. So I really like the matchup for both guys. But as far as becoming the boogeyman for Sebastian Fedora, I think he can present a lot of problems because of his height and reach. Um, but if you, you know, somebody like, you know, I'm going to get more into that. I don't want to speak too much on round two as far as, uh, you know, him potentially biting J uh, JaVale Charlo or Brian Castano, whichever wins. But I think for him to become the boogeyman, he has to work on his defense. I think sometimes you could be a lot slower of a fighter the taller you are. Uh, you know, if he was fighting at heavyweight, it's a little bit different because it's, you know, um, you know, the smaller the guy, the quicker the guy can be. I'm not saying everybody has the same type of speed and power and stuff like that to, to, to defeat this kid, but he showed a lot of heart in the fight, and that's what I really like. That could lead to being a boogeyman, too, because a lot of people, you know, they may say, hey, okay, he went down, so that means I can knock him out. That, that may not be the case. Styles make fights for a reason. And I think, both, you know, Eric, Erickson Lupin is a really great fighter. Um, but I really like seeing from Fedora that he can, as long as his arms are, he did fight in the pocket. Um, but I, I feel like for him to become a true boogeyman and continue on the path that he's on, I think I, I think that maybe his next fight will be for a title. I think the winner, because all the belts are taken up by Brian Castano and uh, Jamel and Jamel Charlo. So we, you know, if he's a title contender, he has to fight one of those guys. But I think. For, for him to, to actually prove that hey i could be one of the best or the best and take some of the belts he has to work on his defense he has to work on his footwork um he has to learn how to use his distance I, you know i love to see a, a a tall fighter fight in the pocket but a lot of times that makes your arms a lot shorter is is you know the longer your arms are and you fight in the pocket the slower you move a lot of times so i think as far as him becoming a boogeyman i think he can potentially be the boogeyman but i don't believe so against either uh, i think that he could probably beat um, Brian Castano, like I said, we'll get more into that in round two. But uh, I think with uh, Jamel Charlo, it'll be a lot harder. I think it'll be a speed uh, discrepancy because, like I say, if he chooses to fight on the inside, I believe he get knocked knocked out. But if he can, if he can learn how to use a jab uh, the right way and, and keep his distance, I think 
that's hard for any fighter. And I think that um, this kid got a lot of upside, whether he lose or win against anybody. I think he has a ton of upside, and he will be champion one day. Um, but as far as, you know, his defense and his footwork, uh, learning how to keep his distance, I think that's something that he's going to have to work on for him to be respected in the sport of boxing and take. And I, I believe everybody take him serious, especially after a tough fight. But let's get into round two. So let's get into round two. So does uh, the, the winner of Brian Castano versus uh, Jamal Jamel Charlo, do, do they have anything to worry about with uh, Sebastian Pandora? I, I think I think both of them do. I think that if Brian Castano, which I don't expect him to win, I kind of expect uh, J Jamel Charlo to actually knock him out. But just say it went the other way. I think that he can he can beat somebody like Brian Castano because Styles make fights. Uh, Brian Castano is a, a more somewhat of a pressure fighter. Um, he throws a lot of a lot of punches. Very smart fighter too. Um, and I just think that the, the arm reach. I, I think that Sebastian Fedora will come in and he will be super prepared for a fight like that. And I think just based on the Styles alone, I think he have a better chance in beating uh, Brian Castano than he would uh, J Jamel Charlo. Um, but I feel like I feel like Jamal Jamel Charlo would actually give him more of an issue because J Jamel Charlo has more power. He know how he knows how to use it. He did hurt um, in the first fight uh, with Brian Castano. I believe he could have got Brian Castano up out of there, and I believe he's going to get him out of there in the second go round, and he will be the undisputed champion at 154. But I believe Sebastian Fedora has a long way to go. I believe he's very slow on the, on the feet. Um, I think that, uh, especially being as tall, you only have so much room to work inside that square circle. I believe that he'll be easily walked down and pushed backwards. I believe, uh, especially if Erickson Lubin, not to take anything away from him, but Eric, somebody like Erickson Lubin is a really great fighter, but I, I don't think he's on the same level as somebody like Jamel Charlo. So I think Jamel Charlo actually knocks him out. Um, but if Brian Castano was to win, I could actually see this young kid actually being undis the new undisputed champion at 154. But like I say, Styles makes fight, and we don't truly know until they step into that uh, to that square circle. But I believe that Jamal Charlo, uh, or Jamel Charlo, I always get <laughs> their names confused. But uh, Jamel Charlo, well, I think he knocks this kid out because I think as far as footwork, speed. Uh, power. I don't think he could take it. I, I really don't think he's uh, and he's still he's still fairly young. Um, I, I really don't think he could take a, a, somebody that really knows how to punch like uh, somebody like Jamel Charlo. And, and I really feel like J Jamel Charlo should have won uh, the first fight versus Brian Castano, but he just didn't hit the gas a lot of times. Uh, but th could that become an issue fighting somebody as tall as uh, Sebastian Fedora? I, I think so. It could. You know, if you don't let your hands go and, and uh, Sebastian uh, get into the, uh, you know, kind of get into the gym and work on some things as far as footwork and using his, using more of a jab. But that jab, you know, the taller you are, the slower you are some, in some, some cases. Very rare to see a very fast uh, puncher as tall as he is. Uh, and he's, I wouldn't say he's awkward, but like I say, you know, the longer your arms are, the further you got to throw them. So, um, I think he's still got a little while to go. I don't see him become an undisputed champion just yet. But you guys let me know what you think about this one down in the comments below. That's going to conclude another episode of Big Bear Boston Combo, episode 102. You guys let me know what you think about this topic down in the comments below. If you want to see what I'm wearing, shoptic.com. Follow me on all social media platforms that I'm currently on. Links will be down in the description below. I always want to thank you guys for keep continuously coming back to my channel to give me more boost and the motivation to keep going with this content. Also, please make sure you like, share, comment, and subscribe, and also hit that notification bell. With all that out of the way, thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Big Bear Boxing Combo.